So I'm starting with daggers. Um, this is the first part of my pattern. This is the main base piece. I'm cutting out three of them to start. I might need more than three, but here I've just traced it one to six millimeter foam. And I'm guessing I need between three and five pieces. So I'm gonna start with three, glue these together, and then kind of see if it's gonna be thick enough or not. And this is my reference image. So I have these traced now, just the base piece. I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out and see what I need to do from there. So this is part 24 of my making of the Asha Lane videos, and this is the next to last video, the one more after this. In this video I completely make my daggers up to the point that they're ready for paint, or at least priming, and then in the next video we priming, painting, and sealing, and I'll be done. Um, as I said, I was starting with three pieces for the base, I ended up doing four, so later on I cut out a fourth piece, and that's just for one dagger. So eight base pieces all together for both daggers, since these are twin daggers, and these are the fangs of Ashamane, which were a artifact type weapon from Legion, one of the WoW expansions. Um, if you're a Frel Druid, it was the artifact that you would pick for the fancy looking cat forms. And as always, I'm using contact cement to glue all the pieces together. So that's what I'm doing here. I have a little bottle at this point because I knew I was just doing the daggers and I didn't need a whole big can again because I won't be using contact cement in a while since my next project is sewing. Um, and I'm just using these popsicle sticks there so to keep areas separated until I'm ready to push them down, this makes it easier. So the basic shape was pretty much the easiest part. It was just a trace of the perfect side view, or at least as close as I could get of screenshot of the daggers from in-game. Um, actually, I think he's a screenshot from Wowhead, but basically that's their model from the game. And then I had to figure out all the little bits and pieces. If I remember right, one dagger had 62 pieces, and there's two daggers. It was a lot of pieces. It took a lot of time, and I used foam clay as well. So here, these pieces are all glued together. And at this point, I had four layers, as you can see here. So this is the four layers all glued together. I ended up having to cut where I was pointing there between the hilt and the blade, just because I wasn't able to get my Dremel into areas. So I had to cut this through there and then glue it back together later, which was an ordeal bit of work. And that was a quick little video from Instagram. Here I drew on the basic shapes for where I need to Dremel to get my blade shape and I have one side going over here and as I said I had to cut it in half so and I'm marking out where they need to be glued together and all that and again marking where I'm going to Dremel and then using my Dremel to get that blade shape. These did end up being a little thicker than in game um, but I was just referencing these images I had over here. The no color image over there is someone's 3D model, so it wasn't exactly from game, so I wasn't following that super closely. Um, but I was following it some, just kind of figure out a different angle. But from the in-game screenshots, I only had the side view, so that's what I was going off of. But they did seem pretty similar, I believe. But here I'm getting those kind of like, I call them like crystal shapes going on, because this blade is kind of like a crystal and metal over top of Ashamane's fangs is what it is. And here I'm showing so far. Um, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, I started with a 100 grit and then went back over with a 120 grit. And that seemed to work pretty well. Pretty well. I think what was the most tedious was getting the handle round because it needed to be a round oval shape and that was something. I think I hated that the most. <laughs> yeah so here I have I believe both sides of the crystal hilt thing going on here. So that's the basic shape for them which did take a while. Also the end because that needed to be circular later you'll see. And here I'm working on that handle like I was talking about. I just kind of worked in a circle slowly all the way around, um, taking this rectangle-y shape and making it oval. It took some time and it, I had to be real careful around um, where it was going to meet these metal pieces later because it was just kind of an awkward looking spot so I had to make sure I didn't round it out too much there but also do it in a way that blended so there was a lot of going back and forth later as well. 
and here I'm kind of working on the very end because that also is supposed to be a round oval like gem shape so I'm trying to dremel that into that kind of shape so um, and I tried my best to stay in the frame I get better I kind of move things around as we go but um, this was at the point where I had I think as far as days I was able to work on these daggers I think I was down to like five days at this point five five to seven days so I was a bit stressed So here I'm adding on to the areas that will be metal um, to kind of bulk them out because they do stand out farther than the handle part or the gem part or the crystal parts that I've been talking about. So you'll see here I'm using some a couple of layers of the two millimeter foam. So all my foam that's black here is six millimeter and all of my white foam is two millimeter high density. So here I'm just kind of finagling at the patterns and cutting out some pieces. I think I do two or three layers. I think it's three layers actually of two millimeter foam for this little metal piece that goes around the hilt around those crystal pieces. And then I just did one extra piece of the six millimeter foam for the very end towards that crystal oval thing, Jim. So those are glued on here and I'm trying to get that, uh, oval shape which is it worked <laughs> it was an adventure and I was very nervous to do this step but it did work so and I will show pictures at the end of this video of them completed even though the next video is going to show how I complete them um but yeah it's it, we're getting it it's gonna be fun sort of it wasn't that fun to make it was pretty stressful to make but I loved how they turned out everyone loved how they turned out and they were very durable I kept dropping them at the convention and kicking them. They got stepped on right, kind so of once, camera, not like fully stepped on, but they did. EVA. Well, I don't know if it's technically EVA, but it is the foam clay. I got mine from TNT Cosplay. Oh, crap. Um, this is the one that I used, or at least for this cosplay that I used. Same thing I used for my mask as well when I was making it. Um, so, as it says, it takes 24 to 48 hours to here and for the molds if you go and press it into the molds which here I'm just using like for my paint I have some ones that I didn't use here and I pushed two in here for two half spheres which each dagger gets two um it's going to go in the freezer now for 24 hours then I'll pop them out and then they will need to finish curing for 24 hours before I can sand them and all that so that's why I went ahead and did this real quick because I'm hoping to continue working on this dagger tomorrow and the next day so this will be one of those last things I glue on there I think so and I'll show you what this is this guy here that's what these are gonna be so and then before they cure I'm, it should be a little bit soft I'll do the little cracks and stuff in there I was gonna leave it smooth but I don't know we'll see but yeah so these are going to the freezer now for 24 hours and all of that, and then I'll pop them out there. So now I'm sanding these little metal pieces that go around the crystal parts of the hilt. Um, I do want to say something about the foam clay that I put in the molds. Um, I left them in the freezer for 24 hours. I took them out and let them sit for about 24 hours before I started sanding them and stuff. They were fine when I was sanding, but after I had finished all my foam work for my daggers and started painting, whenever I was kind of pushing on it a little bit while painting, um, Obviously the foam clay wasn't cured all the way and it actually pushed them in some So they were still soft in the middle as it turned out. So I would recommend waiting like let's See, I don't know, maybe a week to be safe in between uh, Putting any pressure on those. So like now they're totally fine But when I was painting them they were soft in the center, but it didn't seem like it um, But they were so they got a little smushed. I didn't get any points taken off for that. I don't know if the judges just didn't notice, but it worked out. <laughs> yeah, see here I'm just taking the Dremel. Um, I had glued those three layers of two millimeter foam together and I'm just sanding out the edges so the seams aren't so noticeable. Later at the end, I'll put quick seal all over everything. Uh, but here I am doing contact cement to put that on there. And this side of the dagger is almost complete. I should say in this video, I'm just doing one dagger instead of both of them in the video as I did most things just because I'm completely copying it again for the next part. But this is like the little, um, so on these blades they have metal 
along the crystal. So I decided to use two millimeter foam to go around and add, the, um, add some depth for the metal parts, I guess. So that's what I'm doing here. And at this part where I'm doing these little, most of these little details, some of the details I had to kind of make my own thing. Some of the details like this, I was able to, other than this little curled part, I had to make my own of that. Um, but the flat pieces, they're pretty simple shaped. I was able to cut from my screenshot to make a pattern and just kind of change, add some space here and there so they'd fit better on a 3D object instead of a flat object. But I just contact smoothed these one too, and then I used my Dremel to smooth out the seam on the, what would be the sharp part of the blade. So that's what I'm doing there. And here I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this over here. Um, I ended up deciding not to do all that little curly stuff all the way across. Instead, I was just going to do just the point here and then just use paint for the rest. And now I'm using my Dremel again and such to just kind of blend out um, seams again. And then also I'm angling down where this will attach to the blade half again. Just because, so in game there's no space there, it's just like the two pieces float next to each other, but couldn't really do that. I thought about using clear acrylic dowels, but I decided not to, instead I was just going to kind of sand the pieces down so it was fairly skinny in the middle and then when they touched, no one would really pay attention anyway. Actually when I was asking questions on forums and such about if I should do clear acrylic and everyone was just pretty much just like I didn't even know it was two separate pieces I thought it was a solid piece all the way across I didn't know there was a space so I decided just to go with no space so these little pieces here I did with six millimeter foam as I said that's what all the black is um this is what the fangs are so the center of the blade um I kind of so I took that I rounded the edges which is what I'm doing right now I'm kind of rounding them a little bit because it's a fang shape shouldn't be like sharp edges um, and for the little, I guess there would be runes, no one really, I tried to ask what those are supposed to be and no one really knew. So I'm just referring to them as runes. Um, could be some sort of writing, I don't know. I just carved those out with an X-Acto knife and didn't do anything real fancy with those. Um, and now I'm kind of taking like at the edge of my Dremel, um, the sanding barrel, and I'm kind of digging lines into it. Kind of like you would for like making wood grain or something, just to kind of get more of that ancient tooth look. And then a simple glue it on lighter. But first, I'm trying to make sure everything lines up right because I was having some issues with my patterns, a tiny bit. Um, so I'm just stick pinning it at one place and trying to figure out this white piece here, which is what the middle that goes around the tube is supposed to look like. So I had to do some little things there. And here I noticed that some of where I had sanded, I hadn't sanded far enough in, so I need to go back and sand more. And then it's time to glue. I do use Wildwood brand contact cement. I know Barge is more recommended, but I can't find it locally. I can't find this, so I just use it. Um, it is, there's some tricks to using it. It's not as easy to use as Barge. You have to wait longer in between coats. Um, sometimes you should use two coats instead of one coat. I mean, okay, so yeah, sometimes you just want two coats instead of one coat, and in between sticking the objects together, you have to wait longer than you do with Barge. So this little guy has all of his foam work done, just needs some quick seal on there, but here I'm just trying to show the best I can of it being mostly black, um, the little details of it. And here I have one side of the blade ready, and he didn't really catch because it happened so quick, but those little triangle shapes, they're within the white around the tooth area. Those are little pieces of foam as well that I shaped into little tri triangle shapes, triangle, yeah. Um, those were a pain to make because I dremeled them and the dremel kept sending them flying and then I have to go look for them so that was fun um, but I felt like that was a needed a little added detail so okay so here this is how my daggers are going to stay put so in the game you know your weapons like to just float next to your body or on your body and not actually be attached so I'm using rare earth magnets um, I put some I used them these earlier to attach my foot armor and now I am, I use my Dremel to dig a little hole for um, the magnets, as you can see right here. And then I put contact cement in there, along with on one side of the magnet, and then I'm going to shove it in there. 
I only did this on one side for each because I only needed it on one side and I had the perfect amount of magnets to do it that way. So yeah, just shove it in there and then it's good to go. Um, so I put a magnet in each of the dagger and then I put a magnet on each side of my hip on my belt for the bags. And then once I get this other tooth side dremeled, I will glue it over top of that like I did the other side. So there's a lot of repetitiveness with this because I have to make one side look like the other side, then I have to make another dagger that's two-sided look the same as those. So a lot of things I'm doing like four times. And here I'm just, again, contact cement, throwing it on there. On the belt, this is on the inside of the belt so you don't see it. But it worked pretty good, I would say. Um, it was a little bit thick of materials. So right here it worked really well, but once I glued that thing piece on, um, they did stick, but if they got bumped in the crowd, then they would fall, so I'd have to carry them in crowds, which is why I was saying earlier, they were getting thrown in everything or at the convention, and were totally fine. I had a little bit of paint chip off here and there, but nothing major. So, they are durable, at least. So, yeah, here I'm just kind of wanting to show um, that they do stick up. This is one of my tests. And just floating on there, it's great. But they do stay at my sides as long as you're not smacking them. Just in a crowd of people, they get smacked. So uh, maybe stay on accordingly that way. Oh yeah, so here I'm breaking out where those little uh, foam half spears are. That I later smushed, unfortunately. Just a little bit, though. Um, I sanded around the edges of those because they were made them flat on the back side and all that. Um, and then I had two millimeter foam. Again, I was tracing my pattern straight from the screenshot for that little area right there and then the other pieces you can see that I drew and these are all the little triangles because there are so many little triangles that go all the way around that kind of they're supposed to be like um like one rings where they have these little finger things that hook on the gems the little one like a diamond well this had like that sort of thing for the t each tooth four of them but then it had like layers to it so like each dagger got they like 16 of these, I think, all together to layer them up. So this is this one side here, all the foam on it, and I was very excited about it. So I think it looks super awesome at this stage. I was super happy with it, which I really needed because I was getting so stretched, so stressed at this point. I was like, look at this. It's pretty. It's great. So yeah, I just have to finish the other side of this, which I haven't done yet at this point. Um, I'm trying to kind of show the grain in the tooth a little bit. Once I heat sealed, it kind of take, took away more. And then when I painted it, it took away even more. Or not painted, but then I plastered up. So I would, if I went back and did these again, I would make the grain detail in these, the teeth of the daggers way deeper. So they would actually show up more. I ended up kind of faking it with some paint. I went in with some darker um, into the grooves that were showing to make them, you know, more noticeable. But, yeah, I wish I would have dug them deeper. So I'm pretty sure I do this side off camera because I'm doing exactly the same thing as I did on the other side. Just my patterns are flipped. You can see some gaps there in the layers of foam. Um, but when I heat sealed, it kind of made those gaps. So I used quick seal, as you can see I've done now to fill in these spaces. I'm using a little wooden dowel, very skinny one, to um, glue the two pieces together. This adds some strength in there, as well as making sure the two pieces actually get held together. So I use, I just kind of shoved those in there with no glue or anything, but then I glued with contact cement um, on each side of where these two foam areas will touch. Gave them time to settle, I think I gave them like 15 minutes, and then I shoved the two pieces together and they were good. Um, but I tried doing this several ways. I tried using hot glue, I tried using hot glue with contact cement and such without the wood in there, and the two pieces would just fall apart, basically. As soon as you wiggle them around or anything, they would separate. So I wanted to make sure they were very strong and that when it happened, which they, it works. Um, I do wish that I would have have dremeled some lines in there ahead of time to make this easier to put in. As you can kind of see on the handle, I got some weird funkiness where I was shoving that wood through there. It kind of bent the foam here and there, so I ended up going back in later with some 
foam clay to kind of smooth that out a little bit. But it didn't matter too much because I'm going to layer fabric over the handle so that would hide a lot of mistakes on the handle itself. Um, but here I'm shoving the two pieces together and it was very difficult to do. It took a while and I had to fight with it a lot because there wasn't any space already made for it. I just had to make it fit. Um, but it did work. I did definitely wish I would have dremeled out the space for it though, so it had been a lot easier. But once it's on there, it's on there, it's good. That's what matters. I wasn't worried about making these parts just be able to disconnect for travel or anything because the blades are only about, um, I think it was 20 inches long altogether. So they're not like giant, they fit in boxes and whatnot, so it's fine. And that's it all together. We'll get a better angle here in a minute. And as you can kind of see here and there, um, I do label all those pieces. They're numbered all the way across. So, yeah, makes it way better when you organize with labels by labeling your uh, pieces there. Numbers or whatever you like. But this is the blade finished, basically. All that's left is plastic dip, paint, and then sealing. And these are ready to go. Oh, and then I'll... I also have to do the little faux leather strips, which we had a situation with, you'll see in the next video. But it all worked out, and it was great. And I love how these turned out. But yeah, this has been an awesome project. It's definitely the biggest build that I've done. Uh, this is only my third cosplay that I made as well. Kind of, I've kind of made a fourth one, sort of. <laughs> Not quite. Um, and here's just a little test showing you how they stick onto my belt. Super cool and stuff. And here you can see this is all the pieces for just one dagger. As I said, there's over 60 pieces of foam plus foam clay. Um, and this was the two pieces before I stuck them together. Just a little look at that again. Um, they definitely look more nifty before I covered them in the quick seal, like I, as you can see here. Uh, but the quick seal did cover a lot of those little cracks and such and smooth them out. So, and this is the photo before the daggers were done, but just in our backyard of the costume together without the daggers and I think I added a few more things here and there and then this was the first photo from the convention um, I'm putting all the photographer stuff down below here you can see the daggers and all the other photos here I'm showing you you'll be able to see the daggers so this was on stage at the fashion show you can see the daggers some at a different angle and in darker lighting and then this was also at the convention but outdoors And then this was in a studio down the road from the convention, but it was the same weekend as the convention. Um, he did some cool things with lighting. I got some purple lights to kind of accent the purple of the costume. I thought that was really cool. But thank you so much for watching, and there is one more video. I know this was a long one here, but the next one's very short. I think it's under 10 minutes. And it's the last one of this little series for Ashamane here, and we're painting those daggers, so you can see how I made them look like that. Um, as long as adding the little faux leather pieces. And then I have like a Matsuri Khan vlog I'm going to upload even though it's super late. But I'm still going to do that and then all the Halloween stuff coming up. So you can find links below and thank you so much for watching.